Hey, Rick. You following what's happening in Thailand? Some kids stuck in a cave. We're on the list of rescue divers. It's just a tourist cave. It looks easy, but when it's flooded, it's impassable. Last seen nine days ago, 12 boys and their coach are trapped in the flooded cave. Hello? Hey. They're here. How many of you? 13. 13? They're all alive. Well, it really was in, in almost entirely built around the sort of the key turning points and the and the and the sort of critical challenges and and the way that they were met. Um, you know, there's a there's a scene in Apollo 13 that people like to reference, uh, and they they it shows up on clips to this day, and it's where they they throw all of this junk on the table and they say this is what they have for us to f you know fix their oxygen system. They're, this is all they have on board to work with. We're going to have to figure it out. And they do. That's based on a real event. But when I read this script, not only were there many surprises in terms of the, the, the wide variety of um, heroic selfless acts that, that were demonstrated that I didn't know about, in addition to, of course, the heroism and the remarkable feat that the, that the divers uh, achieved, but there was this sort of seat of your pants problem solving that was going on under under duress and under pressure, and I was I was fascinated by that. So I tried to lay out sort of what the technical problems were, what the emotional challenges were, where the physical threats were, and just keep building scenes around that. And and look with a with a scripted, dramatic dramatized version of an event like this, what you have are great actors, and you have and you have scenes that you can construct to make these. Points and so yes, there's that larger theme that you were talking about, but it's also the price that people pay, the investment that they make. That that of course you don't see in a headline, but if if you're an audience member, it can make the film very uh, you know relatable, creates empathy, creates suspense, uh, and 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 it just reminds us. And and look, this is what the real heroes did for us. It it, it, it creates a kind of an object lesson in what is possible. Uh, but but of course, and it and you know they're, it's they're people, they're people making decisions, and in this case, a lot of courageous people and volunteers. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it, that was just one other feature, and then I'll move on. It's um, it's um, you know it's one thing to see highly trained individuals doing the thing they're paid to do. You know, Rick Stanton was a firefighter. A story about him on the job going and doing a rescue is one kind of a thing. It's another thing when Rick Stanton is, a, is an expert cave diver, but this is his hobby, and he agrees to take this period of time in his life, put, his, put himself at risk physically, emotionally, and everything else as an act of volunteerism. But it wasn't just the divers volunteering. It was thousands, including Tanette, who's here, uh, you know, and remarkable efforts that were made there. So I was just fascinated by the tapestry of, of, of the volunteerism, um, the intercultural interaction, uh, and, and, the, and, the, and the courage. You know. hey, hey. We found the boys. They're alive. Careful who sees that. I was brought in, you know, a couple of months after, I think, um, during the scripting, and, you know, one of the things that I really appreciated was how receptive Ron was in terms of ideas. He was just really curious. I think that's one of the things I really liked about the way Ron works is that he has an innate sense of curiosity to actually understand, so how does this work? And he's always asking me these kinds of questions, and sometimes the, the answers are quite funny because they're so specific. Like, for example, you know, when we were talking about the monk in the film, the crew bar, you know, we said, oh, he's it, you know, he has to be Burmese, and then he said, why? And I said, because they don't shave their eyebrows. And then it's just tiny, tiny little details like that that, you know, like makes it authentic. And I think that that's one of the things that, you know, um, you know, we did our best to, you know, really get across, that, you know, we really did our research, and, you know, Ron has been uber receptive about, you know, all of these little minute details. You know, like uh, at the first day that um, the team called me that, I got this role. I can't believe that, you know, it actually, I just like, is this a dream? You know, like, 
I have a chance to work with Ron Hubbard in the you know the Hollywood theme. It's like it's a big opportunity to me, and um, I'm very nervous at that time, you know. And uh, I remember that the first day I met Ron, uh, he was in the conversation, and uh, he was busy, so uh, we didn't have a you know we we haven't talked. And then after that, like a, a minute after, like Ron came to me and uh, he introduced himself like properly to me. So in actually, it should be me that I'm, um, you know, like interview myself to Ron. But um, he came to me and like, hi, I'm Ron. Nice to meet you, you James, right? And then uh, he walked me into the cave that uh, in the set that um, we built it up. And then uh, he showed me uh, everything is gonna. And you you're gonna sit here, you know the water is come from here, and then he showed me everything, and then uh, I, and and he told me that okay, you can stay here for a while if you want to feel something, if if you want to meditate in here, just take your time, and as my first impression with Ron, so um, wow, I just like wow, I still remember that day, you know, it's the big opportunity to me. Thank you so much, Ron. <laughs> and J uh, James is is a very popular performer and actor. Uh, in, in his generation, and of course, a lot of the young actors, they, they weren't actors. They were, they, were, they were from the North, primarily, had not acted before, and so there was another worker, our other producer, Billy, uh, Thai producer, was working closely with them, but James was very important in actually leading them and guiding them and helping them understand how to be in a movie. So he was their coach, <laughs> In, in, on screen, but he was also very much their 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 coach throughout the movie as well, and he he he, he brought so much to the film. Thank you. Thank you. She was very brave. How do you stay so strong? We are team. We help each other, and our coach help us. Coach. I've never worked on a film before, clearly. So there's just the whole process of being involved in a, in a movie making was incredible. But then it's the story that we were intimately involved in. Uh, look, it's I see it as a celebration of a. You know, I'm really proud of what we did in Thailand and everyone else, and I'm re I see it as a celebration. It, so, so clearly, there's a backstory for this because if you think about it, it's preposterous that myself, a 57-year-old man who lives in England, was flown into Thailand to pay, take part in this rescue. If you think about that, that's ludicrous. And watching you know, the actors who were age-appropriate wandering around with all this equipment in the cave, it, it brought it home to me how preposterous we must have looked out there. But you know, there's a huge back history of what John, myself, Jason and myself have done, not just in rescues, but you know, this is a hobby. We do this for a hobby. We... We got a name for doing our hobby, and because of that, we were the people to call on various incidents and resolve them all over the world. We've been flown across you know, Europe, we've been flown across the Ch uh, Atlantic to do things. So we have a huge back history and largely successful of these sort of rescues, and that's why we were called in. But it is entirely voluntary. You know, we, we don't have to do it, it's not our job. Uh, but but why wouldn't you? Because you know we have amassed those skills. So when I heard about the rescue in Thailand, um, it was entirely appropriate that we would go. We were amongst the best placed people on the planet to be able to go there and make a difference. Well, we prepared. We had uh, fortunately Ron <coughs> and his team gave us lots of time to prepare, and I had also been speaking for months with with Rick it was during the pandemic so it was mostly by zoom although I did get to go meet him in England at one point uh, I don't know if we were following the rules exactly I shouldn't say that but I mean as far as meeting up I, we found a way to meet up briefly. all's well then as well yeah it, it worked and we were we were safe and we were you know uh, but but he did turn me on to some he said I can't bring you to England to cave dive we could meet briefly because you are happening you have to go to some work in London and I'll meet you but um, he turned me on to some people that he had trained with uh, with Jason I guess and John uh, in northern Spain 
in the mountains there, and they said there's the rock is the same as in these caves in Thailand, and the situation, the conditions are the same. The water is a bit colder, it's winter, but you could try that. So I, I learned that a little bit, and I thought, wow, this is harrowing. Why would someone do this <laughs> for fun? It's crazy, but you know, as an actor, you want to get it right. And I was not only listening <clears throat> to Rick the way he spoke and trying to learn as much as I could via Zoom, he showed me pictures, videos, so forth, and. It wasn't a special effects movie. We were underwater. We were really doing these things. And once they realized we could do it, and Rick said to Ron, no, I think these guys have learned enough that they can really do this. We could, you know, we'll supervise all the time and be careful. But they can safely do it, which allowed Ron to see us up close under there. Yeah. It's not like they took our heads and put them on right. stuntmen. I just have to jump in here because <laughs> it, it, to give you a sense of, of uh, Vigo's focus, uh, Colin as well, and, and, and everyone, um, it wasn't quite like that where I said, oh, I guess you guys could do all the diving. Vigo, there was like practically an intervention. Vigo came in and said, "We, this is so much a part of our character, and now that we understand it and, and talk with Rick, but I think you'll see that we can do it safely, which Rick confirmed, and so did our stunt coordinator. Uh, I Please schedule it so we do all the diving. Well, that's a totally preposterous idea for a production as complicated as this one. And we had money, but not, not that much money. It takes a certain kind of mindset for the deep cave diving. You have to be a bit nuts. They're very, very dangerous. High water level and the low visibility. There were moments that it really underlined for us how dangerous cave diving is, how dangerous it can be if you aren't in the safe environment that we're in. But it was fun because, you know, I can't imagine I mean, where, where is there another job that you get to go <laughs> and kind of live out what, what's like a childhood fantasy, which is like pretending to be a real life hero, which I'm not. <laughs> and learning a new skill and understanding something that you may not have uh, investigated before. I mean, when, when so many of uh, the so-called leaders in this country and in countries around the world exhibit a kind of, not all of them, but many of them, uh, selfish, greedy, dishonest behavior as something to to have as an example. It's wonderful that you have a recent event that exemplifies selfless collaboration <clears throat> for the common good. You know, nobody was doing this, neither Rick nor any of the others, none of the Thai people were doing this because they were gonna get rich, because they were gonna gain new territory, because they were gonna get uh, political power. People did it because it was the right thing to do. You try and dive those kids the whole way, all you'd be bringing out is dead bodies. Hi. With oxygen running low, the entire nation is anxiously waiting for what will happen next. John, you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Just give me a minute. Please. Okay. We can make it. 